One of the major problems that I had when I first started to learn programming was there were some individuals, and I trusted those individuals, they were seasoned professionals, and some of them said that we need to be more object oriented. And I mainly predominantly code in JavaScript. Now, JavaScript doesn't have the class syntax. Now, I want to talk about object construction. All classes do is they make a template. So, for example, if I had, let's say, hoovers, and my hoovers have generally the same criteria that define them, the same sort of description, the color, weight, size, maker, let's say. That's the same sort of criteria. And then also, they have the same verbs as well. You can obviously start hoovering, switch it on, you can pull out the extension, you can do all, all sorts of things with the hoover. But every hoover, let's say, that I want to produce does the same thing. So it has the same sort of nouns to describe the hoover and the same sort of verbs. Well, how, how am I going to dynamically generate objects every time a new hoover comes off the line? Let's say a hoover is built, it goes through a machine, the machine analyzes it, scans it, and then what it needs to do is it needs to create an object, and that object then needs to go into a database so that I can keep track of all my products and all of the hoovers that have been made. Well, in order for me to do that, we have classes. And in JavaScript, we don't have classes, we use something called constructor functions. But their job is the same thing. Their job is exactly the same, is to build objects. The way they do it and the way they go about it is different. But all they are there to do, all classes are there to do, and all constructor functions are there to do, is build objects. That's it. So if I need to dynamically create new objects for new products, I already have the template, I already have the structure and the verbs are already defined and I can just tell it to build a new object, build a new object, build a new object. Just like if I had a manufacturing company that made hoovers, I wouldn't change everything or I wouldn't do it every single time differently. I would find a procedure, find a set of rules and instructions to build the hoover and then I'd repeat, 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 repeat and we have mass production through that same process. And likewise, if we have mass production of objects, we must be able to have mass production of objects in the programming realm. I mean, if you had, let's say, another type of object, like a bank account object, and let's say this is a big bank, international, all over the world, banks need to create withdrawal objects. They need how much you're going to withdraw, how much it has been spent in what location, all these different things. And that's for each transaction. That's a template for each withdrawal on a bank account. And then all I need to do is I need to be able to replicate that object hundreds of millions of times for all the hundreds of millions of traction, transactions that go off every single day. And do I want to manually create those objects or do I want those objects to be on a production line? Well, you can think of classes and you can also think of constructor functions as constructing, building, creating objects in mass. It creates that same object over and over and over and over and over and over and over again, thousands and thousands and thousands of times. And once you have built that object, that basic template, you can then modify that object because don't forget an object is unique. So let's say I have a class that builds a bank account object. When somebody comes into my bank and wants to set up a new bank account, you are creating a bank account object. And this bank account is exactly the same criteria. It has a balance, it has a withdrawal limit, and it also has an overdraft fee, for example. So I'm going to make a class or a constructor function, doesn't matter. And all it's going to do is when I run that class or when I run that function, all it is going to do is it's going to build the same object. It's just going to create a template object. Now, once that object is created, it goes to the clerk and the clerk then says, can I have your name? Uh, can I have your balance that you want to put in? What do you want your overdraft to be? What, you know, and so forth. But there is a template there. Your clerk doesn't have to go, what criteria do I need? Uh, this, 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 that, no. No, the object, the template is already defined. Then what you need to do is fill in the criteria. 
So each object can be unique just because it came from the same class or came from the same constructor function. Each object that's being constructed can be unique. Once it's been created, I can change that object and then I can save that object into a database. And I can create another object from the same class, modify it with different customer details and save it into the database. Once it's an object, it's unique. But please do note that classes and constructor functions are not objects in and of themselves. They are here to build objects. Now, once the object has been built and created, you can modify it. Now, there were a few programmers that said JavaScript is not object oriented, and that is a complete false perspective and false narrative. I'm not going to say that they were just lying, but People don't really understand, in some cases, what object-oriented programming is. Some people believe that in order for a programming language to be object-oriented, you have to have the class syntax. So that means you've got to have the class syntax, the class keyword, the name of the class, the braces, and then you've got to have, you know, and so on and so forth. You've got to have that class syntax in order for it to be an object-oriented language. That is rubbish. Objects are objects. No matter how you build them, how you create them, objects are objects. So let's eliminate classes and constructor functions altogether. Let's just say I have a bank account program and let's say that it's not very dynamic. We don't have classes and all the rest of it. We've got to manually create the objects. So it's a very small bank, not very big. And I'm just going to build these objects all by myself. So I'm going to create two bank account objects for my two customers that have come in. And that's it. That's the, that's the only two I've done. I've shut my doors. That's it. Set for life. So I have my two customers and two bank account objects. Now my program is able to access and withdraw funds from the balance of each account. It can modify data on the account, such as the account holder name and so on and so forth. Is my program object oriented? The answer is Yes, just like your mind is procedural, the processing is procedural, but ultimately the world we live in is object oriented. We're orientating around objects, whether we're in a room or whether it's the earth orientating around the sun, it doesn't matter. It just means what do we orientate around? We are orientated with objects. So likewise, when you take a look at programs, programs are and can be object oriented. It means they're modifying objects. They're working with objects as the data. They're analyzing them, they're changing the objects. Now, as I said, that procedure and all those procedures are procedural. But when we modify access and when we work with these objects, it's absolutely an object oriented program. Think of your procedural functions orientating around and are orientated around the objects, the data. To have an object-oriented programming language, it just needs to have objects. That's the only criteria there is. You don't have to have a production line in order for you to produce products, objects. So we don't have to have classes and we don't have to have constructor functions. They're very useful. They're great production lines for producing products or objects. But in and of themselves, we don't need them in order for this language that we're working with to be object oriented. All you need is objects. So please understand that just because a language does not have the class syntax, it does not mean that that language is not object oriented. The only criteria we're looking at is objects. Objects are objects are objects. And if your program works with, manipulates, and modifies those objects, then it is an object-oriented program. And that means that the language you're working with is an object-oriented programming language. And if you can work with objects, you can also be procedural as well. You have both, and you benefit from both. I can assure you that free will is where you think logically and you say, what am I gonna do next? But if you don't have a nice simplistic data structure, it frustrates us. For example, you've always had maybe somebody who's come in and started moving stuff around in your home 
and you find that they've put something somewhere and then you forget where they put it and then you're like, oh, you get really frustrated, you get angry. And that's because your data structure has been messed with, that precious drawer or that tape measure that you always, whenever you go to find it, you can never find it. That type of structure. And you definitely don't want that in the programming realm. You like the structure and that's why we have object orientation. Object orientation has structure. Find the data that I need when I need it. And the analysis part, the free will bit, your mind is the procedural bit. Think, interact, and work with those objects. Just don't mess with the structure and don't lose my tape measure.